The Raspberry Pi processor at the center of the Pico comes with a real-time clock. So why do we see so many boards adding real-time clocks? I'm going to try to explore this a little bit in this video, as well as look at why and how to use external real-time clocks. One popular real-time clock is the DS3231. A lot of modules that use this are available and usable from the Raspberry Pi Pico. The DS3231 is an extremely accurate battery maintained clock. It's temperature adjusted. I'll talk a bit more about that later in the video. There are a couple of uh, repos with examples to go with this video, including how to connect a DS3231 real-time clock to a Badger 2040 display, displaying an analog clock face and the current temperature. This video is sponsored by my friends at PCBWay. As a maker, I need people like PCBWay I can trust to help fabricate parts of my designs. PCBWay are there to help me. A go-to solution for PCB manufacture, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. All my maker needs. So go check out PCBWay now, or after the rest of the video. The Pico comes with a real-time clock. I do debate whether to make that statement or not though. It certainly comes with a clock that provides date and time in a human calendar format. It allows us to set a single alarm for a future date and time. This can be used to power down the board into a sleep or dormant mode, then to wake it at a particular time. That functionality is beyond the scope of this video and is quite hard to configure. Our real-time clock has SDK functions to manage it. These are initialize, set and get for the time, and then some alarm functions. Those of you with the long memories will remember I've touched on the hardware RTC interface before. I looked at how to set the real-time clock from SNTP on a Pico W. Provided I am online all the time, then using the internet to set and keep the clock accurate is a great strategy. But if you're talking about the Pico or internet connectivity is only occasional, then we are exposed to some shortcomings of the RP2040 real-time clock. There is no separate battery backup for the real-time clock on the Pico, like you would have in your PC or laptop. Therefore, on a power failure, we lose the time. Worse than that, we will actually lose the time every time we reset the board, though on a microcontroller that might be quite a long time between resets. As developers, we're human and some issues from time to time are likely to cause a reset. That's why we have and use watchdog timers after all. One of the other usages of the real-time clock is to allow the board to sleep or become dormant and therefore reduce power usage then wake at a time in the future. On the Pico, that's far from easy to configure. Though there are a few tutorials that have tried, due to issues in recovering the state of the clock on the Pico and therefore having the Pico back in normal state, most of these results are using an external real-time clock. Using an external real-time clock module with our Pico have a time source that is independent from the Pico's reset mechanism so we can get and set the time across a communication channel, normally I2C. The battery backup power for the real-time clock module can be completely separate from the Pico, so we have more power options in shutting down or putting the Pico into a dormant state. Then we can use an interrupt from the real-time clock module to advise the Pico of an alarm or wake it from dormant state. One option for an external real-time clock is the DS3231. This is an extremely accurate real-time clock, which uses temperature sensors to compensate for temperature changes of the clock oscillation speed. It has an I2C interface for interfacing the device to our Pico. A separate battery backup, so it will run even when we power down the board. DS3231 modules come in a variety of types. I've got a couple sitting on my desk. A generic module from eBay, which comes with an EEPROM along with the DS3231. I won't go into working with the EEPROM in this video. Then there is a Chronodot board, which is just the DS3231. J 
Generally, these boards have six pins of connectivity, though the Chrono Dot also exposes the battery and a reset line. This basic set, though, is ground, VCC, which is 3.3 volts when we are working with a Pico, SDA and SEL lines for I2C communication, SQW, which is either a programmable square wave clock or the interrupt line to tell us that the alarm has been triggered, and finally, the 32 kilohertz clock that the board is producing for timekeeping. The functionality of the DS3231 is controlled through 18 registers. These hold the date and time either to be set or read. They also allow for two alarms to be set in the future. Finally, they also have the temperature of the unit. This is one of the things that attracted me to the DS3231 as I got a temperature sensor for free. We can basically transpose those registers into functions in C or C++ to allow us to interact with the real-time clock. I've done exactly that, and there's an example repository on GitHub. This contains both the library and two examples, one which simply reads the date and time and temperature from the DS3231. The second uses my SNTP example from a previous video to set the real-time clock. The library is largely a clone of work by Victor Constant and his simple DS3231 library. The only reason I cloned and adapted this was that firstly I wanted a more accurate temperature reading and the original version only read a integer, though the DS31 only provides two bits more accuracy than that anyway, but I wanted those two bits. Secondly, I wanted to be able to place the DS3231 on configurable pins and therefore also switch between I2C0 and I2C1 on the Pico. These are really small changes though, and all credit for the work goes to Victor. So let me look at an example using the DS3231 with an RP2040 board. I've chosen to use the Badger 2040 again, as that gives me a nice e-ink display to play with. I'm going to display an analog 12 hour clock and the current temperature in Celsius. As always, I'll share the code for my example at GitHub. I've actually extended the examples from the Badger 2040 examples repository to include a clock example. I've connected the DS3231 to the Badger 2040 using the QWST socket. I bought some 4-pin JST SH connectors and then put a DuPont connector on the other end to connect to the device or my breadboard. So this could give me a nice little clock with a temperature sensor on my desk. It's only updating every 30 seconds. I've not though looked at reducing the power draw by putting it to sleep in between updates. That could be done. So this was a nice easy project connecting the DS3231 real-time clock to the Badger 2040. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you are buying the DS3231, do shop around for them. I've found very wide price differences between suppliers. I've managed to buy them from a well-known auction site for around £5 a unit. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please like, subscribe and hit that notify button for more content from me. Bye bye for now.